So I entered when I was 20, uh, specifically for drones, and that's how I got into drones. Um, first I started out with Shadow, RQ7, and then from there I did MQ1, and that was uh, selected, I was selected for that one. Uh, it was to that uh, for two months, no uh, shadow, RQ7, a con M MQ1, it was to that one month, and then other, other student has other studies for like uh, FAA uh, regulations and such like that, yeah. which is universal. So it's it's combined to be like about eight months of training and so. Meu drone, uh, the Predator, is mais igual de aviação, mm -hmm. that. Tem tudo control, all the controls are similar. Um, all the uh, sensors, we have the same exact sensors, uh, pitot tubes, IMUs. Uh, everything is built like a plane for FAA reasons, and it's all, it's, it's really a plane, so it's just we have a different way to communicate to it. To actually operate uh, during long missions, it's only two people, uh, but we use support crews to, we, we have support to help us with our mission, like uh, we have a mission coordinator to help us coordinate with their space, uh, and just, we have a ton of analysts. Um, mm -hmm who collect the data, all that stuff. And of course, we have the mechanics and such. Uh, I really don't know how many it takes for the whole operation, but that's pretty much, I think that answers your question. Right. It's, um, it's very, it's very manual. We're always hands-on with the mission. Nothing is really automatic. Um, we always have the pilot there. We always have the sensor there. Uh, but the pilot, sometimes he could switch modes to, to relax a little. Um, he could set a mission where it'll, it'll fly circles. Uh, but he's always there. He always has control of his, uh, his rudders. Um, and he can take control at any time. So it's always manual in that sense. Tem dois verdades, mas tem tem redundancy. So we, we operate with satellite always, um, mm -hmm. but when we're in range for RF, uh, we use that because it's better quality and it's quicker. Uh, the satellite is is delayed. It's like um, it depends where we're at and where we're flying, but it's like two seconds. So it's it's not the best. And it's a lower resolution, so. Yeah, but we use two, we have two separate systems and both have redundancies in them in case you know, an anomaly happens. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The Verdans operate, we operate on satellite, so all anywhere. Anywhere. But um, take off and landing, we need to have uh, direct line of sight because two seconds is not the best for take off and landing. It would be easy to crash. So, um, wherever we operate out of, we have like, uh, like I can't say the actual range, but uh, it's a pretty good range. Yeah. Basically, a line of sight. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for this, Vertage. Clima, say thank you much. Turbulence here, PRG, um, we, we lose satellites sometimes, and then it takes a while to get back. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we can't get it back, and it'll come, it'll fly back to where we are, and we have to find it. So, 
yeah, this happened to me maybe maybe 18 times when I was there. Um, usually it's quick. It comes back really quick, so it's not as frightening. But when you lose it for, you know, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. you start thinking. So, but yeah, this, this will happen to me. Okay. Okay. Uh, tem, tem outra pessoa tem emergência uh, quando eu vou a Afeganistão. Uh, Ellie's motor uh, it, it turned off and he had to crash land somewhere, somewhere. So uh, yeah, that was the only mishap we had when I was there. So. Um, 